Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to the Giga War. We are about to march upon the Phoenician Empire. We're playing as Persia. We've just declared a surprise war, and we do full damage to enemy walls with all of our melee units. We also have an awful lot of mobility thanks to this great general here. I would go as far as to say, as our objective this episode is to take out Ugarit, Tyre, uh, and then maybe one or two more cities. If we could make it down here, it would be fantastic. I'd also like to take out a bunch of this infrastructure, things like theater squares. I'd like to pillage for faith. There's a lot of stuff that I want to get around to doing. We are building the consulate. I think I would definitely want to go for, I mean, intelligence agency fits a little bit better with um, the Owls of Minerva because it gives you an extra spy, which is really nice for indoctrination. However, what I really want is the Grand Master Chapel because that's going to get me plus five faith per turn as well as the ability to buy land units with faith and it'll give me extra faith from pillaging districts and improvements. So my military will start to produce the resource that I need to produce my military via faith. Now, let's go ahead and get this city under siege. Uh, I'm willing to lose like one to two man-at-arms per city that I take here. I have a surplus of man-at-arms and I'm also really interested in getting as many pillages as possible. I want to get my catapults, both of them, uh, well, they're trebuchets actually, as close as possible, and I want them to be flanked by, flanked by infantry. We're also going to be moving up our immortals to the cities, and we can begin the slow chipping away of this city's health with our immortals. Now that will be, like I said, a slow process, but the cool thing is we are constantly earning experience on our Immortals. I don't think I want to crash into this encampment. I could crash into it, but I don't think I want to. I don't think it would be healthy for my units. I think I want to focus on pushing through to the east. I want to push through the city as well to go blow up this campus and like as many of these district tiles and stuff like that as possible because I need to extract resources from the actual process of fighting the war. In terms of civics, I really want diplomatic service because I want access to a spy. If I could get a spy into one of Phoenicia's western cities, for example, Matau, it would be a fantastic fantastic because I get another plus three combat strength against them. Now, I've completed the aqueduct in Babylon, which has left me with the potential for another industrial zone in a city that has really bad production and no real options to get production. So I think realistically, building this industrial zone slowly over the course of the next like period of time is the only way I'm going to get production in this city. Um, and it's kind of similar to Ashuna. What I probably need to do is to get a trader inside the city to start trading back and forth. But yeah, some of these cities they just, just needs to be um, needs to be industrial zones. Now, I have access to the capability to blow up these walls, but I would like to kind of smash these walls all in one turn. And I want to, I want to slow play this war, especially because I also need to get hold of Niter. So I need to save up cash to buy a settler to go settle this Niter. And in order to do that, I also need to make sure that I'm uh, you know guarding the settler as he makes his way over there. But the awesome thing is I should have a huge amount of mobility thanks to the fact that I declared a surprise war and I'm playing Persia and Persia gets huge benefits for surprise wars and thankfully it doesn't look like um, Phoenicia has actually recruited crossbows yet so their ranged combat strength is quite low on their cities so they're actually going to struggle to slow us down right now. We do have access to the bank which is going to be a fantastic improvement particularly because we are playing Elza Minerva so we do have access to the Gilded Vault um, which is going to give us adjacency culture equal to the adjacency bonus of the commercial hub so that's four adjacent that's four culture right there four culture right there and um those are the only two that i can see right now but anyway my commercial hub has become a way to generate culture which means i don't need to go immediately for uh theater squares the gilded vault uh, is honestly really good war war things so what do we got here we got a granary and uruk i mean we definitely just need builders in here like the, the, these cities just super hardcore need builders but it's not an efficient place to build a builder i will just build a builder anyway uh, build a builder sounds like a build a bear but like for Civ. <laughs> Build a builder. You move that way, you move here. Our goal is now to get these two catapults in range of the city. So we'll pillage this and then step you out. You're going to advance and pillage. You're staying, you're moving, you're moving. Uh, you're going to shoot the city. You're going to advance and shoot the city. Oh, I don't know what happened there. There was like some weirdness with the uh, shoot. A little bit of left click mad mania. You may as well shoot that knight to soften him up. Let's bring these two trebuchets forward because they will do very significant damage to the walls. And now the city is under siege. So any damage we do to it can't be recovered. So now I feel safe to kind of smash my units into it. Not this one. This guy's a little bit hurt. So I'll just fortify him. Then I'm going to keep just leveling up my units by like hammering into these districts. Just trying to get experience on my, um, on my guys as much as I can. It feels like the right thing to do. I would like to be producing more military. I'm not producing enough military. I need to start producing military like now. So when a few of these buildings finish, I'll go back to unit production. 
Um, and I'm also trying to find the barb camp here. Okay, there is a toa. Maybe the barb camp is gone. It's just a toa remaining. Yeah, I definitely don't think Phoenicia has managed to get itself a crossbowman yet. Otherwise, it would be doing a lot more damage with its shots. Um, why don't you go ahead and step back to a safe place. Let's get both of these catapults. Well, this catapult is leveled up, so I'm going to take shells because the goal of these catapults is to obliterate city centers. So getting plus 10 combat strength against city centers is like a 50% damage increase. Okay, that's the way that I want you to think about that. Um, I'm going to swap out this man at arms because he's a little hurt. Uh, first, I'm going to pillage. Oops, I pillaged with the wrong one. First, I'm going to pillage and then swap. He was meant to pillage the farm, but that's okay. You're going to pillage this uh, campus for the 140 science. You're going to step over. You're going to move up. You're going to move up. Um, we're just cycling through units to get as many of these pillages as possible because there's a lot of value in pillaging all these tiles. Uh, we can also break the walls here. You're a little bit too hurt. You're safe to do it. You're safe to do it. Plus, you're standing on a farm so you can heal and you can only get shot by one thing. Ooh, we could take Ugarit this turn, but I would rather get some pillages in. So we're going to hold off on that. I would like to start producing more units. I'm actually out of iron. That's kind of part of the problem here. So maybe preserving my units is the right move. And instead, I'm going to go for the amphitheater to get that extra culture because that culture is going to benefit us long, like in the long haul. Like it might not shave much time off nationalism, but it will shave a decent amount of time off mobilization. Um, so that's going to be nice. And we, we definitely need to be um, need to be thinking about like the future of our empire. So let's go ahead and blast the hell out of this city. You get ready to cross the river, moving up. All right, we've got the city surrounded. We'll get a pillage next turn. We might be able to catch that trader too, which would be fantastic. There's also a campus down here. There's gunpowder. So we'll need to get some niter, uh, mainly for bombards too. Uh, not enough movement to pillage that. But the the, the, the pillage, the power of pillaging is just so damn juicy. I'm so glad that I played that Norway pillaging game way back in the day. It just, it changed how I play Civ in a very, very fundamental way. Now, Tyre will be a little bit more difficult of a target because of its position at the water. Uh, we may need to like attack through Jerusalem and then back up through Tyre. We may need to kill this district here. It'll be slightly more awkward, but that's just that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Let's pillage here. We can get another pillage on that. Uh, and so we will delay the conquering of the city. There's metal cast and we just pillaged like 300 science. Um, I think the thing to do would be to maybe move towards line infantry. That feels like a definite sort of militaristic direction that we want to go. Um, do we just take the city and skip the final pillage? It's a hundred and something signs for a turn. The thing is, if I pillage, if I just go straight in, it means we get to the next phase faster. So let's get to the next city faster rather than sit here and pillage all day. We're going to keep this city. Now we do need a governor to be plonked down in there. I'm going to plonk Victor. Uh, let's have a look at the old rebellion map mode. Happiness level, occupation grievances and pressure from nearby citizens. So part of the problem is just Tyre is just a really big city. So we're going to push through Tyre. We're going to move our catapults down as well. Well, trebuchets. We need to take out this district. Make sure that there's stuff standing in front of our, um, our trebuchets to protect them from reprisal attacks. Let's get you guys healing up and we'll start moving down the gang of immortals to the south. Could be worth it to levy a card, actually, and I will. That's a bunch of man-at-arms and muskmen that I can add to the masses of units that I'm going to be throwing at the enemy. The city of Susa has finished construction. Um, we could produce immortals to continue to back up our situation. I think we're going to start tra transitioning to heavy cavalry, maybe. Heavy cavalry and artillery. It's kind of that phase of the game. So I'm going to go for the armory to allow me to continue to build up my power level. Although a theater square in here would be genuinely amazing. Either that or a commercial hub. The commercial hub would be fantastic here. That's a plus three right there. It's so much potential gold. The production from the armory is fantastic if I do want to build units. I think I'll go for the armory first, but then I also need the granary and the watermill because this city has just been struggling for production. And this city has been like forced to do so much over the course of the game that I think it needs just a little bit of help first before I do anything else. We're going to repair the monument, the watermill and the granary, and then the library and the theater square. So repair all the stuff that we just broke. Now, we got ourselves a builder up here. I definitely feel like we should go send him to get the dies. And I think we could go for the university. It is like a 10% science increase for my empire for 14 turns worth of production, or I could get another builder. I think I'll go for the university. That little bit of science, it doesn't sound like much, but it really does add up. Plus, if we find more city states, it'll start to scale really nicely. Quadriums are going to be annoying for us to deal with. We actually just don't have a way to deal with quadriums. This immortal took a beating. Um, but all we need to do is pillage and then retreat him slightly. And then shoot and shoot. These trebuchets need to blast down the cities. There is niter here. We would love to get the loyalty under control. Can I buy luxuries? The minus amenities in here are grim. But the thing is, I think we just need to throw units at this city. So I'm just going to throw men at arms into the fray to try to break the walls at Tyre because I don't know what else to do. And I'm going to do the same with Jerusalem. I'm going to go for a wide arc around Jerusalem. Just bring in everything I have 
And the great thing is that city-state units, when you levy them as Persia, they actually get the movement too. So it's sick as hell. Uh, I'll, I guess I'll give the Gustavus Adolphus to the Musketman because he will benefit from that. Now, we could go into the water, but we absolutely shouldn't with our uh, Man-at-Arms. I do want to keep at least four Man-at-Arms over here. Um, you're going to heal for a turn. We've got the Monument in Ur. We want the Grand... Well, we should repair the Theatre Square and we want to also build the Granary. This city just needs so many build charges. We have builders coming out of Eridu and Uruk. So hopefully we can make something work out of those. Uh, I'm going to vote down this military emergency but again, at this point, I am so powerful. I think I could take on the majority of the world. Maybe not all at the same time, but like a huge chunk of the world I can f fight and uh, beat in combat. So I'm super not worried about other players declaring war on me or like declaring me a menace to peace in, the, in our time. We definitely want to take out this treb. Want to smash into it, but we have to kind of play. We, we, do want, we don't want to make bad moves on purpose. That's the thing. We're okay with taking losses. But that doesn't mean we're going to make a bad move just to, like, move the needle. Do you know what I mean? Now, here's the thing. I think I'm going to kill Jerusalem. I don't think it has much value for me as a city-state, um, but it has a lot more value for me if I kill it. So I think that's what we're, we're opting to do. Can you break this district? Almost broke this district. Did we get it? Oh, not quite. Now, the city of Ray, I do think it makes sense for us to build a bunch of Pyrodesis here. Um, but I think the first thing I'm going to do is focus on outer ring improvements like this quarry or this um, sheep right here. I'm also going to grab Victor and just pop him into Ray because there is like, there's a there's a couple of chops here if I if I take that tile. I do want to save my cash so I don't want to take um, tiles if I can avoid it. Like I don't want to pay for them. I want to get them for free. Rebellion in four turns. I don't know what we can do about that. We might be able to plug in some loyalty here. Let's have a look. Minus 10. We've got some grievances. Pressure from nearby citizens. It's not a huge amount that we can do for that, honestly. It really just co comes down to the fact that uh, we, need to break, we need to break Tyre. It's a 15 pop city, right? It's a huge, massive city that we need to take out. Thankfully, Georgia, sub for some reason, levied Jerusalem's musketmen that moved it out of the district. So now it's not defending the city. Number one objective here is to get this trebuchet out of the way. Come on. Okay, trebuchet is moved. Um, let's make sure we break this district. District is broken. Let's bring up the trebs, our own trebs. You retreat back to heal in a safe city. Bring up the next treb, blast the city. That's perfect. You retreat back to heal as well. Keep moving up a constant stream of man-at-arms to smash the city attire. Like, I'm happy to take risks rather than playing it really safe. But again, I don't want to take unnecessary, uncalculated risks. We do have access to diplomatic service, so we want to build a spy. Um, I want to get a high production city to get a spy, but again, the part of the problem of the way that you play Persia is you don't get a lot of production. I'm going to prioritize the spy over Akal Talaki's university because the spy actually represents a massive empire-wide combat boost, which is very hard to ignore. I'm going to grab naval tradition for the envoy. I'm going to grab medieval fairs for the governor title. The cards themselves aren't particularly important. Merchant Confederation is really nice for that extra gold from envoys at city-states, particularly because we're playing the Elza Minerva. But the next big thing that we want to get to is nationalism. And so we're going to go through humanism into the Enlightenment and then into nationalism. And the reason that we want to get to nationalism is so we can start forming units together into a combined confluence. Now, speaking of that, there is going to be a process of production of new units heading to the front line. We need a constant stream of man-at-arms. We need a constant stream of catapults and so on and so forth. I also need a builder in this city. So I'm going to pay for a builder so we can get this nighter online. I'm going to take these two tiles for you. Susa is working that cattle, but these two tiles are so much better for Ray. It's going to give Ray such a good growth and production line. We need to start thinking about the Siege of Jerusalem. I think we definitely want to get up into these hills with our units to start the process of sieging down Jerusalem. Now, I wouldn't say Jerusalem is like a key city for me to siege, but like bringing up this like city-state musketman and blasting the city with it just seems totally fine. I've got a huge carpet of troops here going for us. I've got a builder that I can send. Jerusalem is a little bit harder to kill, um, so we will take a little bit more damage fighting it. I think the trick is to just let that be as it is for now, and we'll just slowly take Jerusalem while we focus on taking our tire. All right, let's go ahead and fortify on this guy. Then we'll pillage. Then we'll take the battle cry promotion to heal him. This trebuchet is going to shoot the city. This trebuchet is going to... Well, I want this guy to get out of here. Can you still shoot the city from this tile? No, you can't. Okay, so go there, shoot the city. You swap with him, retreat. You step up, smash the city. Shoot. You can't quite shoot the city from there. Uh, go ahead and pillage and then hit the city. We're on the verge of taking Tyre, which is big. Now it's going to be a round of both pillaging and shooting the city of Jerusalem. We want all of the immortals that are nearby to get their damage in. We want to swap in man-at-arms who can get close and do the damage up in melee. 
Then I want my musketman to be the primary attacker because he's going to do the most damage to the walls. And then I want a little bit of extra damage coming in from these guys. So now the city can no longer shoot at me and Jerusalem will fall beneath the Persian Empire. Now the city of Ray needs a granary and a watermill to get it growing and producing. It's in grassland, so it, it, it'll grow pretty well throughout most of the game, but we just need to, need to verticalize our empire a little bit. We're pretty wide, um, but verticalizing some of these cities is going to really help us produce those late game units. All right, we've got a rebellion in four turns. So I think we can take Tyre in less than four turns and Jerusalem in less than four turns, which should lead us to, um, you know, the kingdom of heaven. Well, I guess you could make an argument that Jerusalem is the kingdom of heaven in some respects, right? Because you got so many religions fighting over it. Okay, so we've got a builder coming out of Eridu. Let's have a little look around. Uruk could probably make use of this builder quite a bit, so we'll start moving you around that way. We do have a Golden Age secured, which is going to be massive. That will be happening in eight turns from now. And there's just generally a really good vibe in my empire right now. Like things are vibing. Okay, so she's denouncing me, which is fine. We have naval tradition, which did give us an extra envoy. We have nothing to spend an envoy on, so we could just hold it. Let's swap you and you. You're there now, which means you can still shoot the city, as can you. Then you can get an attack. Is anyone close to a level? Not really, so I'll just take the city for the sake of taking it. Boom. We have access to Tyre. We will keep that city. Loyalty is up, which means loyalty should be up in here. Yep, plus 37 loyalty per turn. 34.7 loyalty per turn in that city. Ugarit is now secure. Once we take Jerusalem, that's going to put us in position to take Byblos, Utica, Biruta, Matau, and Sidon. And then we'll have basically the capability of settling across the African continent if we want, which we will do. We may as well try to take control of the Mediterranean, right? We're role-playing as the, the Persian Empire that never stopped. Okay, Giovanni de' Medici has become available. We are going to grab him. We're going to pop him into the capital. He's going to instantly build us a market and a bank. And the bank will also get two great work slots. So we'll be able to fill that with great works of writing as we conquer them and stuff like that. We finished the workshop in Kutaisi. So we could go for the Gilded Vault. I think it would be good for us to continue to start producing man-at-arms to refill our ranks. Let's begin the repairing of Tyre. Uh, Watermill, Granary, Campus, just begin the slow repair of this city. It'll take a while to bring it back up to speed. Um, but once we get it there, we'll be in great shape. Okay, let's shoot Jerusalem, shoot Jerusalem. Let's move you down this way, move you to here, shoot there, move to there, shoot there, uh, move to there, shoot there. Blast that city, you fortify for a turn. Um, we should be able to begin pushing through and pillaging over here. We'll swing a wide flank around Jerusalem rather than through. Go around, not through. We no longer need to garrison the city, but we will keep those guys there. We'll pop down a niter mine. So we're now getting niter, which should lead us to start getting musketmen, which is going to be an exciting process. I think I'm far more interested in getting bombards, in all honesty, but I'll take the occasional musketmen. I'm going to chop here to get that spy three turns sooner, and then I'll improve the dice. Three turns on a spy doesn't sound like much, but imagine if you sped up everything in that city by three turns, right? That's basically what I did by, by chopping. Nice. We've got siege tactics. we got force, and we... We're going to repair this bad boy. Let's shoot Jerusalem. Move you to there. Shoot Jerusalem. Um, I would like to kill Jerusalem with a unit that'll stick around for a while. And so there it is. We're going to keep that city too. Happiness, a little bit worse in here, but that's fine because we can actually totally just slap Victor down in Jerusalem and secure the loyalty in there, more or less. And take a little bit of time to heal on some of these units and then keep them moving. Um, they are trying to build walls in here in the city of Ud Utica. So we need to be ready for that. Let's go for urban warfare on our units. This is, this is the promotion line that I like. And the reason that I like it is Battlecry makes it really good at killing other melee and ranged units, which are the majority of the type of units that you're, you're going to encounter in the early game. Tortoise makes you really strong against ranged attacks. So the unit does its main role better as a melee unit, which is to tank hits on the front line because it works against so many different units. Commando gives you mobility. Urban warfare gives you more combat strength in a lot of general scenarios. And... Elite Guard lets you attack twice. There is a place for Amphibious, in my opinion, um, but I think it's good. I would call this a luxury promotion compared to like Urban Warfare and Elite Guard. Urban Warfare just applies to more situations. Um, I just realized that I totally forgot. I was like so excited by this game that I totally forgot to rename my entire empire after Patreon. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that real quick. Huge shout out to the Patreons. King of Pylos, Tim Russo, Fenrir, Joachim Yarebring. No idea how to say that. Yurabring, Porter Washington, Don's Elite, Mark, Joseph, just waiting for Peter and Paul to appear, Zach Glennie, Brant T48, Carl Sorkvist, David Tremblay, Clockwork Ouroboros, and Edward Doran. Somebody asked me to name 
one of my cities after their daughter but i've totally forgotten what her name was and i couldn't find it so i'm just going to call this city that guy's daughter whoever that guy was from patreon there you go i'm sorry about that but yeah if you want to get your name on the list of possible city renames make sure that you sign up for the patreon three dollars a month gets you all of the premium content and i think nine dollars a month gets you into the um into the naming list which is pretty cool it's a small little benefit all of my mainline content will be free forever uh, this is just mostly for people who want to support me in a more official, greater, more direct capacity. Uh, you never have to do anything other than watch my videos and enjoy them. Totally optional, not required, and you are welcome for even considering it, and you're welcome for tolerating me mentioning it during the video. Let's begin sieging down this encampment. The sooner we take down this encampment, the better. So we'll just get our dudes in position. Let's begin blasting the city of Byblos with our great general enhanced trebs it's gonna be a beautiful day the city's completely we're, we're, we're absolutely cracked right now our trebuchets are cracked our whole empire is cracked we're cracking eggs like you wouldn't believe morbus don't even be angry about the fact that i'm referencing the egg thing again okay so the city of david tremblay has managed to finish the theaters great we've also got the amphitheater one thing that we could do is focus on getting things like great writers but like we're already in industrial area for that and we just need a little bit of culture gain passively uh, if we wanted more culture, we could go for the... Honestly, we need like a builder or two in here. I'm just going to crack out two extra builders. We need to rework some of this land. Um, and then we'll probably go for the commercial hub to keep the gold flowing. Because gold is going to be the thing that fuels our empire in the long run. I do think it would be good to get citrus going. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the citrus here to a citrus industry in Edward Doran. It's going to be nice. Uh, we are a little bit hurt on ha happiness and amenities. So we are going to want to start thinking about zoos and happiness in general. So let's go ahead and have a look at our city overlap screen. There's a really solid entertainment complex here, and then there'll probably be a water park there. That's like a good set of amenities. Then, so that clears that. Then I want to find the next purple. Oh, there's a great, great entertainment complex right there. That'll hit a lot of stuff. Then I'll probably do a water park in this city somewhere, somewhere along the coast up here, just to get a little bit of extra amenities feeding into our empire. Amenities are important. So I've planned out basically two entertainment complexes. I should probably get a third. I guess I'll put one... I guess I'll put one here just for the sake of it. We'll figure out how to do that just for the extra adjacency on this theater square. Nah, you know what? I'm going to move I'm going to move it over here to the left slightly so that it hits more of these cities. Let's blast Byblos. One, two... And any pillages we want in here? I don't think we do. That's a wrap on that. We'll keep that city. Keep shooting here. Move up this way. Move and shoot. Move. Move. Move and shoot. We've got builders running around repairing our empire. And we are absolutely smashing through Phoenicia, dude. It's actually going so much faster than I thought it would. I thought Phoenicia would be quite a bit more difficult to take because they had so much science. But... We're now at a point where we're approaching being top culture in the game, and we're also approaching taking over the average AI in science. Like, we're no longer bottom science in the game, which is typically, that's like the curve arc where you just know that a game is going to go absolutely insane and you're going to, like, completely take over. Super, super exciting. I do think it makes sense for me to get more governors. I'm going to get a Liang governor and just pop it into Fenrir. It's not the best city to put it into, but it just means that all the builders that we make out of this city will be slightly more efficient. And this city doesn't really do anything but make builders because it's like right on the edge of my empire, not really doing much useful. It doesn't really have any good districts. So it's better off just producing those build charges that I need. Let's shoot Utica. Shoot Utica, shoot Utica. Where are my trebs? Can I get my trebs up into range? I can't quite get them into range this turn, but we can keep the train moving. And we can get a little bit of damage in with um, some of these immortals. We can begin battering down Utica. We, I think we've lost our extra bonus movement speed from the, from the surprise war. But like, let me tell you, man, we made seriously good use of that surprise war mechanic. It has just done so much work for us. I do think that the pirate diesel right here feels really good. Desert tile, a little bit of adjacency, kind of cool. We have the Grand Master's Chapel. So now we can officially convert faith into units which we absolutely will be doing in the form of trebuchets. And then we can use gold and niter to upgrade those trebuchets into other things. So we need to get a hold of... Okay, this niter is outside of range of the city. So we need to get a hold of this niter. Well, we need to get a hold of this niter especially. So let me kind of plan out a city location. Right here captures all of the viable tiles in the local area. Yeah, I think settling this tile is the right one. We'll have to buy the niter, but we'll live with that mistake. Let's go ahead and buy the settler. We'll link it with the... Knight, and I guess we'll upgrade the knight, this guy to a knight. 
and that way he's a little bit better defended. We'll pop down the city centre, we'll get our way over there and we'll make sure to have a builder charge ready to get that NIDR online because we need those strategic resources flowing in. Now, I definitely want to get the Chancery. That's going to give us plus three influence points per turn. The really cool thing about the Chancery as well is that once I start getting my city-state relationships up to level three, I'll get plus three production towards uh, all sorts of things, right? Plus three faith from faith city-states, plus three science from Hattusa. Yeah, really, 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 really exciting stuff. Okay, let's have a look at the watermill city uh you walk him do we want to go for commercial hubs or do you want to start building units i think i think the play is to get the commercial hub now that we can faith buy units zach Galeni has finished its granary really want the amphitheater so i will grab it that's going to be extra culture more importantly it's also going to be great writer points which will get me even more culture i'm going to grab a mani here and i'll just put her into a card for now um just to make sure that we're well defended on that i don't think anyone's going to try to stop us but it would be good it's just good to have her and i can also use her as a loyalty stick when the time comes so she's kind of just sitting there as a as a potential you know bomb of loyalty for us okay let's shoot utica shoot utica um we'll attack utica we'll blast utica okay so Oh, no, it wasn't quite taken this turn. That's okay. We will get it next turn. Maybe you can't capture cities with city-state units. I don't know. Maybe I just rolled poorly. Uh, we definitely want to get our trebs up to the front line here. So trebuchet it here, trebuchet it here. Great general occupying the trebs. Shoot this city twice. Rip down those walls. Blast the city with men-at-arms so the walls are completely gone. The city is completely defenseless when it comes through a fortification standpoint. Keep getting those pillages that are snowballing us. Like, the amount of resources we're getting out of warfare is insane. We've got four turns on this city to... To, to keep it going but we'll be able to capture a 15 pop city over here and then once we have Baruta this whole African settling plane becomes available to us we can turn our attention to Anatolia potentially capture like all the way up here become the true Persian Empire I gotta like research how big was the Persian Empire the funny thing is like the Persian Empire hasn't even learned how to embark units like I literally can't go onto the water <laughs> but we've conquered like a significant portion of uh, like the cradle of civilization alright let's get these two new trebs heading to the front line we need to be mindful of our nighter situation. We've got our very first spy. I'm going to park him into Sidon uh, with the goal of getting a listening post going. So we'll drop him in over there. Let's blast the city of Baruta. Break it. Boom. We've taken it. We're going to keep that city. Loyalty isn't even a problem anymore. And we're just... The train never stops, dude. The pain train. Uh, Utica? Captured as well. Keep that city. Loyalty is positive. Uh, let's get a couple of our guys on the move. And we'll start moving man-at-arms and trebuchets to the front line with our good friends, the Ottomans. Uh, they should be a fairly easy war because they're like they have less science than us right less science less military should be a very straightforward war i'm going to go for the gilded vault that's plus five gold and potentially plus four culture per turn it's a lot of gold and culture and right now production is actually less important for us when it comes to producing a military because we have the ability to build units with faith we already have a relatively large army so it's mostly just about keeping that army up to date technologically using gold rather than focusing on like the construction of a new set of units now because every unit that we build has a certain certain amount of like actual gold upkeep right the actual gold that is required to maintain the unit plus a certain a certain amount of what i call implied gold upkeep which is the amount of gold you need to keep the unit up to date technologically so at a certain point it, it actually becomes detrimental for you to build more units um, because you just you simply can't keep them all going yeah it, it just it just it just becomes detrimental after a certain period of time if we can begin the very slow siege of Sidon from across the water the main goal here is to just chip away at the health and gain experience on these guys we are in a golden age which is massive and we can go for the two arms golden age which means we basically don't care about grievances and if we do produce units we produce them insanely quickly um, but it's actually a heroic age so we can even take heartbeat of steam and reform the coinage and we could even go for Hicks on Draconis if we wanted to go for the settling thing, which we kind of did over here in Africa. So we're just in a insane moment of time here that we're going to be able to completely obliterate Egypt, begin settling a massive, like, train. And I mean train of settlers across. We're going to be able to settle Tunisia, Libya. Maybe this is Tunisia. Maybe this is Libya. I don't remember. But we're just, we're just going to settle it all. We're going to settle it all. And we're going to explore it all. We're going to own Africa. The whole Mediterranean will belong to us. We're going to move our army up north to start taking on the Ottomans. We might even siege down Constantinople. We might even take on Georgia. I will at the very least, I'll be sending some sort of scout up here to try and figure out what the hell's going on with Georgia. But man, what an exciting, what a fun game. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye.